Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Post lunch and after a very interesting session on learning, I hope I keep you alive and at the same time engaging. So the next 10 minutes, uh, I would walk you through uh, the journey of transforming experience in multiple organizations that I've had a pleasure to work with. If you look at my journey, uh, I have uh, seen multitude of organizations who have had their length and breadth, whether it is complexity of markets or whether it is complexity of the business model itself. One thing though, that has kept all of them in a very similar platform is that at different points of time, they were in a different need for transformation. And when I say need for transformation, it definitely emanated from something happening in the ecosystem, which made them really rethink about what am I doing internally, which makes it relevant for my consumer, for my customer to look at me. I can go on to talk about a glimpse on the transformation for these four organizations, but it will be best handled if I walk you through the journey of these transformations in a quick snapshot profile, and we can talk a lot more post-session. When I look at transformation, it's a marked change in the form, nature, or appearance of the way you operate. If you see uh, any version of nature or nurture, transformation only happens when you have an exponential change in the way you operate it, whether you are as an individual or a culmination of a simple bead into a butterfly. So anything which has to transform has to see multitudes of painstaking changes. And organizations who transform themselves go through that evolution of painstaking efforts. Let's take a closer look at us as a function. We've seen our roles from being a labor officer all the way to now, wherein each one of us hold our flags to call ourselves HR business partners or people who are driving growth. If you truly think about transforming yourself, that role itself is seeing a fast track move towards experience. And this is where transforming experience comes into place. The genesis of transforming any form of the function that you lead in, and I'm presuming a large part of you hold roles within human resources as generalists or specialists, am I correct? The genesis of that transformation, if you're going through it or have gone through it, starts with the vision of where the organization has to head. Let me take an example of American Express to start with. The need for transformation of American Express started when in 2008, the biggest financial crisis hit the business. The stock price plummeted to less than $29, and the organization was just shaken aback by the anvil of digital and the financial crisis and consumers suddenly questioning whether cards would exist. Well, cards exist after 12 years, but that literally became the moment for function like ours also to think about how do I contribute back to that vision. And this is where transformation of HR and of the business started at the same time. The mission is correlated back to where do I want the organization to head towards and another organization which I can take about is Coca-Cola. With an anvil of being a consumer-centric company, the first job started at home, wherein we took forward the agenda of transforming the way our internal employees looked at us. And how did we go about transforming the same? So always keep in mind that the agenda literally starts with the vision of the organization and where the transformation the organization needs to take and not the people function. Culminating the journeys of various organizations that I've been a part of, I literally have culled it down into four stages, which have always helped me think about if an organization is going through transition, what is it that they need to take care of? We'd keep a quick profile on it. I'm happy to debrief onto this element a little bit more in detail, but I call it IDIS. If you have a better name which comes in future, please do tell me because I would be trademarking it shortly. The stage of transformation for me started with the first element of ideate. Once you know the vision of the organization, it literally has to boil down into what is it that I need to do. And the ideation of whether it is the operating model of the organization or whether it is the way we operate with the consumer in front of us has to have end-to-end -end ownership. You cannot think about business as one part. It has to be a broad-based agenda of end-to-end -end life cycle of the way consumer looks at us. 
is my experience seamless? I, I'm looking at SAP here, and I'm sure many of the partners in SAP today would understand and recognize the fact that end-to-end -end seamless HR experience is one of the biggest tasks of the partners. Employees do not need to go to a separate payroll, to a separate hiring, to a separate experience solution. They look for one standalone. And in ID8, one has to literally look at what is that one solution which provides maximum output with one-stop shop. Organizations which are globally prevalent, and all the organizations that I spoke about, they largely have had global presence in my tenors. They have to look at global consistency, and last but not the least, the roles which specialists and generalists play into the organizations. Fast tracking it, design as I stated, has to be keeping in mind the business first and then people function. Followed by that, uh, the strategy follows technology or digitization, it is not the other way around. The strategy requires you to fit in digital or automated elements of solution and it is not the other way around wherein you fit a digital solution to fit the strategy. And the servicing model, whether you want to keep it geographic or regional. I don't think I need to talk about implementation techniques, but implementation for us, as we talked about transforming experiences in various organizations, and I'll specifically call out the Coca-Cola experience here, when we were launching Workday back then, was literally centered around early engagement. How to get a sponsored network to be able to come together and launch the solution. In the current organization, which is Sony Pictures, we launched SAP last year. And the engagement truly started by getting everybody together and looking at a network of social influencers who actually help us understand what the need of the consumer or my end employee is and taking it back into the mode of execution. Many of us uh, listen to our dear Prime Minister and his focus on governance and not government. This is where the true trait comes into picture. A strategy is best implemented when you have a very solid governance framework around it with somebody who's sponsoring the effort, to the last mile, somebody who's actually giving a bottoms-up feedback on how your strategy on digitization is working. And last but not the least, uh, I always believe uh, if you've fallen short of communicating to your employees while launching digital solutions or any anvil of transformation, just communicate once more and you will find listeners. So communicate to the power of consistency and at the same time to multiple levels of the organization always helps. Stabilization for me, which is the fourth step on transformation, literally boils down to making sure that you're not taking a program one stop, but there is stability in driving it by making sure continually your customers giving you feedback to come back again and again, and you improving it with the help of partners, which could be anybody in the circuit, or at the same time, ecosystem taking one cycle of change again to retransform itself. In a nutshell, uh, with a quick breezer of IDIS that I walked you through, which has helped the organizations that I worked in in transforming their experience, the three levers of success which I'd leave with you. The first one is, because the vision is clear, make sure you have the sponsorship that comes along with it. If your board of directors and your CEO and chairman are not in line with the transformation that you want to drive, most likely than not, you will not find that taking the next leap of day. And I'm stating a hard fact there, but that's a reality. So make sure your sponsorship effect is very well in place. Followed by that, uh, this is one place where we always juggle. I sponsor you, but I don't have money. So find out the lowest solution possible. And we know that the best solution is going to cost me 10 lakhs or one crore or 10 crores, depending on the size of the organization. But the push from the sponsor is going to be, yaro wala leke aana. What is the influencing that you have at that point of time to push for the right solution while driving that transformation and not necessarily falling back on? And this is where your business acumen comes into picture. Literally, you're looking into data from the eye of the sponsor and coming back with a return on investment strategy for the same. And last but not the least, I iterate it all the time when I speak to teams and members that an end-to-end -end ownership and end-to-end -end impact 
to the stakeholder is far more superior and always look at end-to-end -end as compared to piecemeal solutions when you're looking at transforming experiences for your customers or for your employees at large. So with that, I'm going to leave you with a very small glimpse of the transformation in the digital era that you would have already seen in your companies, would see, but how will it impact your own lives? And this is the arena as you think about transforming yourself or your organizations, you should think back on. Every single time I look at this video, I actually shrug back and I say, am I ready? This is the best thing you will ever do for your family. Unique styling, one of a kind. You'll need about six to eight hours overnight charge off the adapter, unless you get running marathons. Hello, Toby. It's very nice to meet you. So, with the journey that your life is going to take, your children will see, hopefully with a very small glimpse of a miniature of success stories that I've shared, you can go ahead and transform your organizations. Thank you, and I'm happy to take a couple of questions if there are. Any questions for Manu? We have one there, we'll take that. Hi. Thank you. Uh, your good name? Jaya. Jaya. Uh, thanks for the question. And this has been the toughest part of uh, driving transformation journeys. And I must say it's not an easy one because uh, return on investment on people capabilities actually is one of the most difficult to make. Having said that, uh, business acumen has helped me many a times to convert the investment which people leaders make in time, effort, or opportunity cost lost for the organization. When you truly say, for the one million hours spent by you in the whole year, when I say you, the people leaders, you could have generated one billion dollar of business. You could have actually created five new product lines, or with a time and motion study, you could have actually gained more productivity and efficiency by these three means. That opportunity cost assessment has always been helpful. And the way it has been helpful is because one, with that business acumen, a business leader is able to convert it into what's in it for them. And the moment you have a board or a business leadership team coming back in, relating it to what's in it for them, they're more likely to buy it than not. The classical American Express example, which is one of the largest transformations in the history of American corporations has been we got a $180 million worth of sign-off for the transformation journey I spoke about. And that did not happen overnight. That happened because these business cases of the 120,000 employees of the company doing the requisite time and motion study to see what is the opportunity cost being wasted because they're spending manual hours in people, process, technology, lack of, if I may say that converted itself into the cell. So I hope you would be able to gather those thoughts there. Thank well, thank you. I'd be happy to chat with you guys offline, but it's been a pleasure to spend the 10 minutes and uh, hope to see you.